This presentation introduces GATAN's in-situ transmission electron microscopy ecosystem, which encompasses several hardware and software products to provide the most comprehensive, fully synchronized in-situ capabilities for multi-technique data collection, processing, and analysis. If you're a microscopist who is interested in developing in-situ techniques for your lab, or an experienced in-situ microscopist looking to expand your in-situ capabilities, then this presentation will be a useful overview of what's possible with GATAN. In-situ microscopy is the best way of studying fundamental dynamic reactions within your sample in real time. Rather than rely on before and after analyses of your sample, you can create a reaction within the microscope and observe the reaction within the microscope, gathering data from key transient moments that would otherwise be missed. We can see here a very nice in-situ video where we observe the beam-induced growth of copper dendrites. Of course, conducting a successful in-situ TEM experiment like this one can be challenging because of all the different considerations and capabilities needed. You need to be able to apply the right stimulus to your sample to see the reaction of interest. You want to collect high quality data with sufficiently high spatial resolution and sufficiently high temporal resolution to see all the dynamic behavior of interest. You've got to consider things like your applied beam dose to make sure you're observing intrinsic sample behavior and not beam induced artifacts. And you've got to be able to correlate each data source together along with the applied stimulus and analyze it all together in order to get the best results possible. The GATAN in-situ ecosystem contains capabilities to address each one of these key considerations to make it easier for all microscopists to conduct successful and impactful in-situ TEM experiments. The data here is a great example of many of these capabilities coming into play. We can see the dendrites grow over several hundred nanometers while still being able to resolve individual smaller dendrite branches growing with fine detail throughout different regions in the field of view. We also have enough temporal resolution to see fast growing regions over a span of several minutes. We know this because we can see our timestamp on the video in addition to the total beam dose being counted over the entire video. In this case, this entire eight minute data set was collected using a total dose of only 470 electrons per angstrom squared, which is incredibly low. Now that we have some big picture idea of what goes into an in-situ experiment, it's time to introduce the GATAN products available to make your in-situ TEM experiments easier and more powerful. There are five different types of GATAN products which together form the most full, comprehensive, fully synchronized in-situ TEM data ecosystem for multi-technique data collection, processing, and analysis. The first component of this ecosystem, the cornerstone of many in-situ experiments, are imaging products like cameras. Microscopists want to be able to see their sample reaction and record video data of all the dynamic behavior. GATAN imaging products, which have capabilities for high frame rate data collection, also enable other imaging techniques like continuous tomography. The next ecosystem component is made of products that support diffraction-based techniques. This includes in-situ selected area electron diffraction, but also 4D stem techniques, both in-situ and ex-situ, to do analyses like strain mapping of your sample or DPC. GATAN diffraction products also enable micro-ED experiments for more life science-based samples. Analytical products are the third component of the, of the ecosystem, and the newest generation of GATAN products enable in-situ EELS, FTEM, and EDS spectroscopy and spectrum imaging. Of course, you'll need to apply a stimulus to kick off your in-situ reaction, and in-situ holders are the fourth component of this ecosystem. There are several types of holders offered by GATAN, but third-party holders are also supported by the ecosystem when used in conjunction with other GATAN products. Finally, the anchor of everything is GATAN's digital micrograph software, which is used every step of the way from experiment setup to hardware control and data analysis. You may be wondering which GATAN products are available for all the different in-situ techniques you might be interested in. For fundamental TEM imaging and diffraction techniques, video acquisition, and tomography experiments, GATAN has both scintillator-based CMOS detectors, the Rio and OneView cameras, and direct detection cameras, uh, the K3, to match the speed and sensitivity requirements of your in-situ experiments. If you're interested in 4D STEM techniques, all of these cameras can be used to collect 4D STEM data. 
However, for the highest end diffraction performance, Gatan also offers the Stella hybrid pixel uh, detector camera. For those interested in analytical techniques, the GIF Continuum is the latest system for EELS and FTEM analysis. And you can add a K3 camera and Stella camera to the Continuum for really advanced techniques like in situ counted EELS or energy filtered diffraction experiments. For EDS, GATAN offers the EDAX EDS powered by GATAN system, but also supports integration of third party EDS detectors. When it comes to holder products, the GATAN ecosystem has many fully supported options for in situ stimuli. If, you, if your experiment requires heating, cooling, cryo transfer capabilities, or mechanical straining, then you can consider GATAN's own core of TEM holders for those in situ experiment types. However, a lot of microscopists are interested in applications like catalysis or energy materials, which might require liquid or gas environments, or an applied bias. For these experiments, you'll need to look to a third-party TEM sample holder. Whether you have a GATAN holder or a third-party holder, if you're conducting an in-situ experiment with any of the GATAN products shown in the previous slide, you can rest easy knowing that Digital Micrograph will still save key experimental metadata for, from the holder, such as a current holder temperature, and synchronize it with the in-situ data as it is collected. This is a very powerful capability that we'll discuss further throughout uh, the rest of the presentation. The final main GATAN product uh, within the IS ecosystem that I want to discuss a bit more in detail is the Digital Micrograph Software, or DEM, uh, which is also known as GATAN Microscopy Suite. Digital Micrograph software comes with all GATAN products and really gives you total in-situ experimental control from one central location. It may look a bit scary at first glance, but Digital Micrograph is well organized to make it easy to use. On the left-hand side, you'll find all the main hardware and display tools you'll need. Here you can see the TEM and GATAN hardware status and control some features like closing the gun valve, blanking the beam, inserting and retracting detectors, etc. You also have the ability to save stage positions within DM. This area is also where you find tools for adjusting display options like brightness and contrast of your image. In the middle region is where you will see the live data being displayed for you to monitor the reaction in real time. Any data sets you open are displayed in this middle region for you to analyze and you can use tabbed workspaces to stay organized. This region is also where you can open, write, and run scripts for data collection and data analysis using either DM scripting or Python languages. But we'll talk more about scripting later on in this presentation. On the right hand side, we have our controls for data acquisition and data processing, like choosing camera exposure time, controlling your GATAN or third-party in-situ holder, applying drift correction, and processing IS data. As we can see, there are several different products that enable a whole suite of techniques making up this in-situ ecosystem. But the advantage of the GATAN ecosystem isn't just the ability to simply enable various types of in-situ experiments, but also the ability to easily collect high quality data using multiple techniques and being able to rapidly process and analyze that data. Let's continue with data collection and how GATAN's in-situ ecosystem makes it easy to collect high quality in-situ data. The first part of any in-situ experiment once you're at the microscope is setting up the detector control and the holder conditions. Within Digital Micrograph, use the technique manager on the right hand side of the window and go from top to bottom to set everything up. For any in-situ enabled detector, you'll find a toggle in the in-situ palette to quickly switch to in-situ mode and enable in-situ specific features for your detectors. Second, you'll find options for key detector settings. For example, if you're using a camera like the OneView uh, camera, you would choose your binning, any imaging exposure time, and the exposure time for the video that you plan to record. Once that's set up, you can choose your lookback time for the experiment. Lookback is a powerful feature within Digital Micrograph that temporarily stores a certain amount of video in a buffer even before you start recording the video. This means that you can start recording data only after you see the reaction happen while still saving data from the reaction onset. More on this in the next slide. After you've set your lookback time, 
The next step is to set a file path for automatically saving your video data so you don't have to worry about setting it later. The fifth and final step is to use the built-in holder controls to set up a holder recipe or a holder set point. Here you can see an example of what it looks like with a Den Solutions wildfire holder. And this is one way in which DM supports third-party holders and brings them into the Gatan Institute ecosystem. Once those five easy steps are completed, it's time to start your experiment. Many in situ microscopists worry that they'll miss the reaction of interest, either because it'll be outside of the field of view of the detector or because the reaction will start before they're able to start recording data. With Gatan's in situ cameras and digital micrograph, you don't have to worry about missing critical or unanticipated events. I talked a bit about lookback in the previous slide. With lookback, you can set up a 20 second buffer of video. So if something unexpected does happen, you can start recording once you notice a change and still capture the reaction onset. However, another big advantage comes with the high pixel resolution of Gatan cameras and the detector performance. You may not, not always know exactly where the reaction will happen in your sample, especially if it has many possible regions of interest like this gold sample shown here. In this case, the best strategy is often to use a lower magnification that you would usually use in order to have a wider field of view. And since you can collect 4K by 4K video, for example, from the OneView camera or the Rio IS camera, you will still have the ability to zoom in on different sub area regions of interest and see high resolution detail. When it comes to in situ data, time resolution is often even more important than spatial resolution. In situ microscopists need to be able to see faster reactions or use only a certain amount of beam dose in their experiment. Fortunately, any in situ enabled Gatan camera can collect in situ data with millisecond time resolution, with frame rates depending exactly on which camera you're using and how much binning you are doing of the image. But frame rates in excess of 100 frames per second are possible with all cameras depending on how it's set up. This is a good time to focus in specifically on the K3IS camera, which is the highest frame rate high and highest resolution camera that Gatan offers, and also uses direct detection and electron counting to deliver high frame rate data with the lowest electron dose possible. The video that was just shown here on the right is the same copper dendrite growth experiment that we saw earlier, only this time the data we'll see was collected over only one second, not several minutes. This data was collected with the K3IAS, which is able to report the sample dose rate and save it along with your data since it does electron counting. This data set then represents not only high frame rate data collection, but also the ability to use extremely low electron doses and still get high quality video data with these high frame rates. And on top of that, you can see exactly how much dose was accumulated over the entire duration of the video, as was shown in the top left. Data synchronization is the last thing I want to highlight as a great benefit of working within the Gatan Institute ecosystem. We just saw how we can synchronize dose information with the data to see how much dose is on the sample at any time in the video. But Digital Micrograph is able to collect and synchronize multiple types of IS data and or hardware metadata from the entire experiment. In effect, what this means is that you can always know the exact experimental conditions during collection, playback, and analysis of your in situ results. As an example, let's view this eel spectroscopy data set that was collected during an in situ experiment that we'll be playing back and reviewing here uh, from Digital Micrograph. This is in fact was a in situ dual eels uh, experiment and we can see both the low loss eels and the high loss eels spectra of this copper tin nanoparticle that was repeatedly heated and then cooled. The data set also shows live curve fitting of the plasmon peak in the eel spectrum shown here in red. And at the bottom we see three curves that indicate the holder temperature set point, the sample temperature, and the holder power that is being measured. All of this holder metadata is collected by digital micrograph at the same time as the EELS experiment and is available during review and playback of the data. This is another example of how holders, including third-party holders, are integrated into digital micrograph and the in-situ ecosystem. Coming back to the experiment, we'll see that there's a certain plasmon position 
at the starting temperature of 50 degrees C. And as a sample is repeatedly heated and cooled uh, to 250 C and then cooled back to 50 C, we can see that the plasma position here is shifting back and forth. As the data is played back, we can see frame by frame as everything on the screen is synchronized and updated live. Both sets of EELS data, the curve fitting, and the marker showing the timeline progress through the heating and cooling sample uh, is all updated and synchronized. This is the kind of powerful and easy to use data analysis that's possible in the in-situ ecosystem. All the holder data and IS data, again, is synchronized together, is easy to interpret, and removes a big headache that many in-situ microscopists face. Furthermore, you can get the same experience with any kind of data source that's collected by our GATAN hardware, camera images, EELS, STEM imaging, EDS, etc. Before I wrap up about talking about in-situ data acquisition, I also want to emphasize that the GATAN in-situ ecosystem is a multi-technique ecosystem, as we just saw in the previous slide. Many times, in-situ imaging is the first kind of in-situ experiment that the microscopists want to try, but it's also now possible to take your in-situ experiments beyond just the in-situ imaging technique. High sensitivity, high frame rate detectors are useful in many cases, and the synchronized data collection makes it simple to collect and analyze many different kinds of data. For example, in-situ EELS and spectrum imaging, as we just seen this example, is possible through the GIF continuum. We saw an in-situ spectrum image data set that collected the reduction of copper two oxide with heating. The same cameras that we use for imaging can also be used for 4D stem data collection and in-situ 4D stem data collection when used with the STEMX system for 4D stem. MicroED is an increasingly popular and important technique in the life sciences sector, and any GATAN in-situ products you may be using for in-situ experiments can also be put to use for MicroED diffraction experiments and related techniques right away. The last aspect of the in-situ ecosystem I'll focus on is data processing and data analysis and what tools are available within Digital Micrograph. Every microscopist conducting in-situ TEM experiments very quickly finds out that effective data handling and processing is just as important as high quality data collection. It's not hard to collect terabytes of data over a half hour in-situ experiment, but it can be tricky to move that data around and find the key moment that you want to highlight. As I mentioned before, Digital Micrograph has many different tools for handling and processing in-situ data. The video that's been playing right now is our favorite copper tin nanoparticle that's being heated and cooled and is undergoing a crystalline to amorphous phase transition. It's the same kind of sample as we saw before with the in-situ eels. As the sample heats, we see it start to drift a bit and perhaps we need to adjust the position of the beam during the experiment and then we change focus and we decide maybe we only really want to focus on the first part of the video. We can process the video in digital micrograph to do uh, many different edits, including cropping the field of view to a specific region of interest, editing the duration of the video, doing drift correction post-processing, adding scale bars and timestamps, and then exporting the file from a GATAN DM3 or DM4 format to an MP4 video format that you can easily put in a presentation just as this one. The resulting video is one we see here on the right. And the key takeaway from this example is that you have complete and easy to use capabilities to edit and reduce your data after acquisition. So you don't have to worry about it beforehand. Digital Micrograph contains two key easy to use tools for reviewing and processing your IS data. The first is the in situ player which allows you to automatically play back your data, whether it's video or spectro or any other kind. You can manually scrub through the data or play it back at different speeds. The second is the in-situ editor, which has several different capabilities included. You can use it to reduce the data size of your data set by spatial edits, such as binning or cropping the video to a smaller region of interest. And you can use it to reduce data size temporally by either editing um, the duration of the video or summing or skipping frames during playback. The IS editor also comes with tools for drift correction of the full image or a region of interest and doing additional imaging filtering uh, that you may choose.
finally, you can export your data set to video with all of the edits you've made and previewed within Digital Micrograph, making it very easy to share with any collaborators. The IS editor is a very valuable tool because you can easily take a data set that is hundreds of gigabytes in size, focus in on the most important part of the data, and reduce then the file size to tens of megabytes, making a huge difference in how shareable and storable the data is. Moreover, any edits that you make are saved separately, and the original raw data isn't overwritten, so you can store it for later. Even better is that Digital Micrograph can be downloaded for free along with the in-situ player and in-situ editor from the Gatan website. So you can do data processing on any PC you might need to and not take up valuable time on the microscope or other shared computers. Some microscopists may find that even though Digital Micrograph has several powerful tools and features for processing data, it may not include every processing technique needed for their application. For those cases, you can use Digital Micrograph, which fully supports DM scripting and Python scripting languages for custom data processing. That means you can use popular libraries like NumPy, SciPy, etc. within Digital Micrograph to analyze your data. With scripting, you can also control data acquisition or do live data processing in addition to custom post-processing techniques. For example, the clip shown here demonstrates how you can use Python scripting for live data processing during an in-situ heating experiment. Again, we see our favorite particles melting and crystallizing as the temperature is cycled. A live FFT is being generated, and then a radial profile of that FFT is being collected and formed live to show how the repeatable phase tra uh, transformations happen over time. And to dive back into our copper dendrite sample, data processing with scripting means that you can do more with your IS data than ever before, such as image segmentation and calculating meaningful reaction categories kinetics like particle growth rates. With that, we are now fully acquainted with all of the products and capabilities offered by GATAN. Together, they form the most comprehensive, fully synchronized in-situ TEM experiment for multi-technique data collection, processing, and analysis. If you'd like to learn more about GATAN's products or view some of the experimental data shown in the presentation, visit GATAN's in-situ website at gatan.com slash in-situ. Download the latest version of Digital Micrograph for free from their GATAN website as well and try out the IS player and IS editor yourself. Make sure you visit the GATAN YouTube channel as well for even more content like webinars and in-depth tutorials and applications data for in-situ TEM and other techniques. And finally, feel free to get in touch with Gatan through the links available on the Gatan website.